Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Hamza and in today's video, we're going to go over my portfolio just like we do every single day. Now, whether I'm up, down or just moving sideways, I promise to be transparent and I show you guys how my portfolio does for the day. Really quickly, we're going to go over the start. We started at $127,000 and we ended the day at $127,000. Now, today was a day that I chose to sit out, which is why a lot of you, especially the members, did not hear from me on the YouTube. Now, really quickly, I know it was a tough day for everybody, and I know there's a lot of people losing money in the markets, including myself, as you guys can see, or I will show you. I myself am losing roughly around, I want to say like $40,000 or maybe even a little more. Let's take a look here. So I was at the top, $175,000. Now I am at the bottom, which is $127,000. So actually, that is like $50,000 that I am short right now. So I'm $50,000 at a loss from the top to the absolute bottom. Now, of course, I did make that money. It was a gain that I had, and I lost most of my gain. So as far as my portfolio is concerned, I am still up, but barely hanging on. I mean, I could be as close to breaking even. I think my break even on this portfolio after buying and selling multiple times is probably $124,000. So I am very close to breaking even, which means I have completely wiped out all my gains for the past like month or two. Since this portfolio is fairly new, all these stocks were purchased at a premium, like higher prices than a lot of you who bought them at a discount. Purchased these stocks at the market value uh, because I started this portfolio a few months ago. Now I'm not too concerned and I'm not too worried because every stock that I have in this portfolio is a good stock. I believe that these are all good stocks and they will all run up in case the market does have a quick reversal, which I don't think is gonna be the case and I'm gonna explain that to you guys in just a second. We have a huge problem on our hands and the problem is, actually the 10-year treasury. The yields on those treasuries are just going up, which means there's a lot of people who are more incentivized to invest in the treasury market. Now, it's weird because the reason that the yields are going up is because the treasury is being sold at a discount. And why is it being sold at a discount? And why will it continue to be sold at a discount is because of the new stimulus bill, right? So because we have this new stimulus bill, there's going to be a lot of treasury bonds out there in the market. And people are anticipating that because these treasury bonds need to be sold, they are going to be sold at a discount. And with the addition of $1.4 trillion pushed into the economy, what this means is that we are in a very confusing yet interesting space for treasury bonds. So I think until we don't get the treasury situation resolved, uh, we are going to have a little bit of volatility and a little bit of downside in the market because investors, especially institutional investors, really don't know what to do with the treasury. Are they buying them now? No, they're not which means they are going to be buying them at a discount later on with a higher yield. And because the yield is going to be higher than normal, they may be more incentivized to park their money in treasury over stocks. Now, of course, once again, I'm just a guy on YouTube. What do I know? Do your own due diligence and research the reason why the market is down on your own. This is just what I have to say and what I think is happening in the market today. Now, really quickly, with all that being said, Let's quickly jump into my options. So Clove, I'm down. Apple, I am down. Apple, actually, I am down the most I have ever been. So 78.50 is probably the lowest point in Apple for me. FUBU, I am down. GM, I am down once again. NEO, I am down quite a lot. PLTR, I am down. ExxonMobil, which I was up in yesterday, I am down today. So I may actually consider buying some more long ExxonMobil calls. Now, one thing you guys will notice about all my options is that they all expire early next year. So they're very long options. So I'm not really concerned about my portfolio just because I have so much time to execute these options. And I'm really glad that I did that as part of this mini uh, $1 million challenge portfolio, right? And the reason is, is that I have enough time to execute on these options without actually losing money. So, and the reason is, is that I have plenty of time to execute on these options. So I highly doubt that I'm going to lose on them. All I need is maybe one good week in the market and all of these will turn in the green. Even the fact that I've lost so much money in the market because of these options, I do think I will recover fairly quickly because the stocks that I own, yes, they did drop, but I did sell and rebuy some of them at a discount. So I've made a lot of good moves when it comes to the stocks. It's just the options that I'm holding are currently giving me this huge loss in my portfolio. I mean, if you just look at the numbers, the $7,800 alone with the $1,300, with the, this is probably around twelve dollars to $15,000 worth of loss within my portfolio right here in just these few options that I own. 
And I know a lot of you have traded options that expire this week or the next, and all I can say is that you guys needed to invest in either UVXY, v VXX, or SQQQ. So you should have hedged against the market just a little bit if you are only in calls, or it would have been nice to consider buying some puts at the high. Anyways, that's a conversation for another video. We're quickly gonna go over the stocks. Snow, I am down. Neo, I'm down $1,600. That's a huge loss right there on Neo. Jumia, I'm still up. I'm hanging on, but that's just because I got into Jumia when it was really low. This is actually a good entry point for me in Jumia. I may consider buying some more Jumia next week if it remains this low. BNGO, definitely an entry. Unfortunately, I did not enter today, but you guys will notice that my buying power did go down from $20,000 to $10,000 today, which means I did spend a little bit of money in the market and I am going to show you where in just a second. ACB down, Piton down, Excel Fleet, massive loss, massive loss. I don't think I want to touch Excel Fleet until the stock breaks even or until I see good volume from this company. They, of course, have a lot of catalysts because they are a startup, because they're a new firm. They're going to have a lot of catalysts, which means there's going to be a lot of good news. Hopefully, I'll be able to recover these $2,000 of loss through that nndm oh my god let's see what nndm is at actually because it may be right to buy nndm under ten dollars yes nndm is definitely a buy which means next week i am buying nndm at below ten dollars in fact i may buy some options to be able to ride the wave and make some money really quickly on nndm because i am becoming a little <laughs> impatient now then we have open door of course i'm going to be buying open door next week as i do think that this is a longer term issue that we're going to have so we are going to see a little bit of less volume moving into the next few weeks until this 10-year treasury situation is resolved and i think the only way for it to get really resolved is for the government to issue the stimulus and we need to ride that wave once the stimulus is done i really think that the stock market will rise again but i do think Think that this is a longer term issue than just a couple of weeks losing money in clove chek i'm down isr i'm down srpt i am down but you know what srpt did run up towards the end of the market day today now i do have a couple of stocks that did make a run up and i actually looked at the buying volume there's a lot of spacs especially that there was a tremendous amount of buying volume towards the end of the day and actually i'm gonna go right there and show you guys what i'm talking about so vgac let's click on vgac vgac if you guys were watching my videos you know yesterday that i did say that vgac is ripe to buy right now and as you can see it dropped to ten dollars and 59 cents today which is close to vgac's residual value now i'm in vgac for close to 15 dollars but if you guys look at the buy volume right here that is enormous, right? So we did have somebody who came into the market with a huge buy volume for VGAC earlier today. And that is actually good news. That means that the stock is going to go back up. I'm in at 15 and I'm going to cost average my way down so that I can get into VGAC for a little cheaper. Sana, I'm down. PLTR, I'm down. WWR, I am down. Fubo, I am down as well. NGAC, I believe, had the same run up that VGAC had. Let's take a look at the volume for NGAC. So it's sitting at roughly around the same price. I'm in for a little higher. Let's take a look. Yeah, you can see we have three candles. So 15 minutes of buying volume towards the end of the market day. So we are seeing people start to pick up these stocks towards end of market day. And you know that the best time to buy stocks is probably when the market is at a low and on a Friday right before market close. Because the next week, that is when you get the best pop for the amount of money that you spend. So there's a lot of people, this could be institutional equity guys, moving into plays that are going to be high yield and high return over a short period of time. So we are in the right stocks. It's just that the timing is not the best. Here, Tesla, I am losing $1,200. Let's look at the volume on Tesla and see what the candles look like as Tesla was close to go. Look at that. Look at that buy volume, guys. Even though we had such a huge buy order for Tesla right before market close, the stock has still continued to remain down in the after hours, which means we are now starting to see huge volume move into the markets and next week could be a better week then we have hertz i know hertz had an earnings call today i don't think it went too well which is why the stock is basically flat grwg still down itrm down agtc agtc still down and it's down 420 dollars ghiv also down nspr down SFTW is also down and RAAC is also down. But look at this. RAAC is also interesting because it is a SPAC. Look what happened today. We had a drop to lowest point ever and then we had it pop. Actually, let's take a look at the volume since we're here. Look at that. 
you can see these huge buy candles. That means I think the institutional guys are giving us a little bit of a hint. These huge volumes are coming in towards end of day, Friday, which means it could be possible for us to see a small pop or a large pop sometime next week, just depending on market sentiment, right? So we're going to monitor the market over the weekend. We're also going to be taking a look at the crypto space over the weekend because if the crypto space rallies really hard over the weekend, that may actually be a good sign. And that's one really good thing about the crypto market is that you can actually kind of sort of link the markets with the crypto market. So if the crypto markets have had a great weekend, more often than not, the markets are going to come back and are going to be looking good over the next week. Just because markets close right now, we really can't do much. But with the crypto markets, you can kind of sort of trend out and see where things are playing. So Doge right here, losing $32, not a big deal. Let me click on Bitcoin really quickly and show you guys what that's looking like. Wow, Bitcoin is at $45,200. So Bitcoin is actually a little low. So remember those $10,000 that I told you I spent earlier today? 5,000 of those went into Bitcoin at 46,000 and change. Unfortunately, since then, Bitcoin has gone down, which means I am losing a little bit of money. I also put some money into Ethereum and we are going to scroll down really quickly and I'll show you guys my purchase there as well. But if Bitcoin fell, I'm assuming Ethereum is going to fall as well. Yes, it did. And over here, I believe we added Ethereum roughly at around $1,500. So it is a little lower than that. Not a good sign to start the weekend off after markets have closed. But hopefully these keep coming back and we will see some gains over the weekend. Now, if we don't see gains over the weekend, it is going to be a little concerning for what happens in the market next week. So yeah, guys, that's my entire portfolio. That is what it's looking like right now. I just wanted to give you guys an update on what we are seeing in my personal portfolio. And just like that, my name is Hamza and I'll see you guys next video.